Khaleesi out. Hi everyone, I'm Sadrine, this is Avang. Hello. Welcome to new Game of Thrones review. You're back! I'm back! Woo! So many things to talk I about. I know. This week's episode was called Blood of My Blood. Let's start with Sam and Gilly going to Horn Hill mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and meeting Sam's father. Ah, oh, what a douche. <laughs> yeah. Who's not too happy his son is with a wildling girl. Yeah. I think, I think it's clear that clearly the dad has an issue overall <laughs> with his son. Oh, well. It doesn't really matter who he's with. It's just one thing that's on top of it. Yeah. I, I do admire Sam's restraint, right? Uh, during the, the, poor treatment that his dad was giving him because you know he was just trying to think like i can't say anything can't say anything I have to protect gilly have to protect the child you know just want to make sure they're safe and in the end he was almost there but he couldn't let them i love that him. actually i was kind of i was kind of annoyed that he didn't say anything a little bit i was like how can you not defend gilly but i see what you're saying like he was just like i can't really say anything because then you know they can't stay that's here. actually hard yeah that's the hard part yeah that really it was but the hard part. then he's like screw it we're leaving and i'm taking the, <laughs> the, sword, <laughs> the valerian steel sword yeah which can kill white walkers we need as many as we can get i know i know now who is he gonna give it to or is he why gonna do keep you it? think he's gonna give I it think to he's someone? Gonna give it to someone. Well, why? Because he is Sam. He's not he, gonna take on White Walkers. He killed one already. It was, but it wasn't like a fair fight. I'm sorry. How many people have killed White Walkers? Because I think we can count them on our hands. Okay. Apparently, Sam is gonna become this warrior. I'm saying that he can use it. I'm, and I'm saying maybe he's just taking it. It's like you know, it's mine. Screw it. I'll take it. Apparently, Sam is gonna take over the throne. This is what's gonna happen. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying, he might keep the sword, that's all. And it might come in handy. Sure. Just saying. You're entitled to your wrong opinion. Oh, and before we move on, we have to talk about the dress. <laughs> and the hair, and, ah! and the way she walked. That was I cute. love Gilly. That was cute. Moving on to Tom and Marjorie and the High Sparrow. Now that's a turn of events I did not expect. I... There's apparently a new age of harmony between the crown and the faith. And I'm like, no, why? You know what? I don't, this is, this did not fly well for me. First of all, clearly I didn't see it happening. And part of the reason I didn't see it happening because it makes no damn sense. Think or about maybe it. you just know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> what up t-shirt reference? Uh, here's the thing. It, when Cersei came out of it and then met with Tommen, they had this really big moment where Tommen was like, I will do whatever you want me to do. You will guide my way. What happened to that? Did they I, just not talk to each other after that? I feel like there's some things you're forgetting. First of all, Tommen is very easy to influence. That's one. Second of all, did you miss the scene between him and the High Sparrow? And you even were talking about how the High, high Sparrow is really good at manipulating people. And you know what? If you're gonna able to, like Tommen is just, He's I'm just not so young, this. he's just so innocent. He doesn't... I'm not debating that. I just think it doesn't make sense in the context of that scene. But I, I think that for him, he's not going against his mother. I think he's just like embracing, like what, just trying to make things better for okay. everyone. I, again, not debating that. Completely with so you on that. what's your problem? My problem is it doesn't make sense that Cersei finally, quote unquote, has back her hold on her son and does nothing with that for episodes on end where she could have had the opportunity to sit him down and just sort of like trick him and just whatever. Okay, first of all, Cersei would, I don't think would trick Tommen because she has said that he's like, he's innocent and she just loves that about him. I don't think she realized what happened, to be I, honest. I, it doesn't make, like, it you know, sense. honestly, it would have made more sense for me where this was sort of like a double turn, double trick, where we, Tommen is with the faith and everything and we're like, oh, what? Then he got him, and then turns out it was Cersei who was behind this all along. I don't Not think even. Tommen is just, he just couldn't lie though. It was very disappointing. You can't, no. It was disappointing. No, it like wasn't. It. No, like it wasn't disappointing. It was actually, it went against what you expected to go, which is great. I'm disappointed <laughs> in how it turned out. Can I be disappointed? No, you cannot. <laughs> but I, I think for me, for me, the biggest question is Marjorie, because we saw her and we saw that they hadn't broken her down. Yeah. And then... She didn't believe. Uh, yeah, especially when she went to see Loras. But in this episode, she does say all the right things. And she does kind of condemn 
things that she did. But is she, she pretending to condemn things that she did? She's on she, message. She is on message. She's she absolutely one hundred percent on message. And and as that scene was happening when they came and and then she was just saying like she was standing next to Tom and I'm trying to look at her face like she does. does she yeah, look she, like does, she does. She does. She totally like, looked really relieved in my opinion. But like, but even after like, does she look like she really believes it or is she like I just need to do what I got to do, you know, to get out of this? You know, I'm just gonna pretend and tell them what they want to hear. When I, I feel like she's still pretending. When I saw all three of them up there, I, I thought to myself, the only person who doesn't believe any of this is Marjorie. You know what? I'll go even one step further. Mm. The only true person mm. that's really a good in their heart is Tommen. Is Tommen. And even, that, will, even, that will be the end of him. That will be the end of him. Yeah. Because Tommen is just so... He really, you know, he really thinks the High Sparrow is good. He really believes in Marjorie. They're both... Manipulating Who's him. kind of over? I'm kind of over Tommen though. Like as a character. Well, it, that's what I'm saying. That'll be the end of him. You know, I I think I think his wrap. his days are definitely being counted right now. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. I'm done. Wrap him up. Wrap him wrap up. Him up. Wrap right. him up. He's done. <laughs> He's done. And that leads us to Tommen removing Jamie from his position. His position. Yeah, as, as the King's Guard. Yeah. Head of the King's Guard. Right? Yeah. Um. Hmm. But. That leads to that scene with Jamie in the Lannister camp, because he's going to River Run. Yeah, so we to saw try that, and get. Yeah, that scene is coming up. To, to try and get, yeah, to try and get it back. Somehow, I don't think it's going to turn out really well. But you know. No. Um, which also leads us to the return of Walder Frey, which you know I had sort of guessed in my breakdown because the old foe, who else could it be but Walder Frey? So Walder Frey is back. Not a happy camper. No, no. Especially since he didn't think much of Blackfish. He's like, pff, pff, let him try to take it. Oh, wait. He actually did take it. Blackfish it. got skills, yo. He got skills. Yep. Yeah. And, um, oh, it looks like Walder Frey's got a new wife. Poor, Ugh. poor girl. She's just like, uh, oh. He's disgusting. Yeah. So, oh, and we kept wondering whatever happened to Edmure or Blackjack. <laughs> That's what I could think of. I'm like, Blackjack's alive. He never dies. Wait, it's not Blackjack. Um, so Enyor is alive. I mean, it, this whole time we were always rough. wondering. Yeah, he looks he rough. This whole time we're like, is he like, how was the wedding night? You know, did they kill him? What happened? No, they didn't kill him. So basically, the plan is to take Edmure to River Run. So the sons, uh, Walder uh, Frey's sons, are going to take Edmure to River Run and basically to, use him and, yeah, as, as leverage yeah. to. Take over the castle. Arya! Oh, favorite storyline of the episode, personally. Quite a few of you had called it in the comments thinking like she wasn't going to kill Lady Crane. And actually, because she was going to mm -hmm. not do it in the end, it will set her character on the new path. Not only did she not kill Lady Crane, she got Needle back, which we knew it was still stashed away somewhere. So Arya Stark is back and she's not no one anymore. Here's the thing, you know how we always say Arya is like Daredevil because she was a little blind? Well, she's not blind anymore. You know who she is, really? She's Batman. She's Indie Queen. No, 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 oh, listen, sorry. listen. My let me name is Indigo. I'm not even joking, I think she's Batman. If you oh think my about god, it, it totally works! My name is Inigo Montoya, you killed my father. <laughs> Prepare to die. I'm trying to give you a serious point here. <laughs> okay, I'm Someone sorry. Someone can't even like... <laughs> okay. it, no, but for real though, here's where I think Arya is Batman. Because her origin story is very similar to Bruce Wayne. Lost her parents, right? She did. Not in front of her though. No, well, no, 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 I'm just saying know, similar. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying exactly the same. Lost her parents, went into sort of, uh, with a list of people she had to like go after, went into training with a particular group, realized that that group was up to and things that she disagreed being with. Blind a little being person. blind for a little bit. Realized that the group wasn't exactly what she was all about. And then saying, Screw this! I'm gonna go my own way, reclaiming her it's true like path. It's like Batman Begins, Game of Thrones. Style. It is Batman Begins, Game of Thrones. Arya is Batman. I'm just saying. You know what? I can totally get behind that. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is why it's my favorite story. Because if anything, now she's gained even more skills. But the wave she's is. also has more enemies. Yeah, the waif is now after her. She's, and she's always been after well, but her. She's now allowed to kill her. Which is <laughs> can, I kill her? can I kill her? Can I kill her now? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> just calm down. Calm yeah. down. Then we get to Daenerys and Drogon! Drogon. 
I've been waiting for this. Isn't and, it funny that she had like a sort of like a Highlander moment where she's like, wait, I can, I can sense a dragon. <laughs> yeah. It's Drogon. He's nearby. Wait for me here. <laughs> <laughs> She had a Highlander moment! She, moment. she totally did! She, did. she can actually sense, you know, there's a dragon around, which yeah. is pretty cool! Yeah. And when she came, right? Who? I did not see the whole riding the dragon again. You didn't? Oh! Uh, uh, again! Well, when, like, she, so, went, when yeah. she went there, I was like, oh, she's gonna ride it again! She's gonna ride it! It's Drogon! It's Drogon! You know my question, though? What happened to the horse, though? Maybe a, oh, maybe a she, snack? A snack? No! It was a snack! <laughs> Aww. I think I think so. No. Yes. No, you're just horrible. The horse is so done. Sad. Look, Drogon's got needs, man. He gotta eat, yo. So he ain't horrible. eating no no Do you goats. Think she's just gonna ride him all the way and not get back on her horse. I feel like she she might be like, oh, okay, let me. She go. might gotta get back on a horse, but maybe not her horse. I'm just saying, the horse ain't there anymore. We're not talking about the essential, which was the big speech, yeah. right? This is the second big moment Daenerys is having this season, yeah, right? We had, we had the, the whole like burning, fire and yeah. burning and then coming out. Now this time it's with Drogon. That was, that was epic. And we will go to Westeros and we will go to Castle Black and we will... No, not Castle Black. Wait. Yeah! <laughs> Here's the thing. This is, this is political. All of it is political. Yeah. It's all about rallying your yeah. fans. Showing them She's the symbol the troops, of, you know? yep, yep. <laughs> Will you fight for me? They were already following her, yeah. by the way. But this time it's like, you are all blood of my blood. Yeah, and I think, you know, that the, the creator of the show, I think in Inside the Episode feature it, that you get after watching the episode work, mentioning how her speech is very similar to what the speech that Khal Drogo gave his people yeah. to follow him with Daenerys and go, you know, to Westeros, so. Here's one thing I, I think is very interesting with Daenerys' approach. Everything she does, right, every time she takes over a situation or she's gonna sort of like use a, a big political move, she has a lot of things, a lot of options, but she likes to take tradition and symbols and then break them down and put them, uh, put them back up uh, at her own level or in her own style. She, she's a tradition maker, which is what is a symbol of a great leader. They break tradition. So she's like, look, usually the cow will pick three of their, his riders to be, you know, blood of my blood. But I, Daenerys Targaryen, pick all of you to be blood of my blood, which is like a huge, massive honor. Yeah. Right? It's a massive honor for yeah. them. And she's doing it with the symbol of power at the same time, which is, if you think about it, massively smart on her part. Because she could have done that on the horse, but wouldn't have had the same impact. Yeah. Doing it on the dragon, yeah. maximum impact. Yeah. And now, moving on to my favorite point of the episode, which is Bran. Oh, God. Running away with Mira God. after Hodor. This is like a recap. Hodor is still holding This it. is like a recap of this series. We're, we're watching oh, Bran. Oh, Bran watch is, <laughs> it's more than a recap because we're getting scenes that we had never seen before. We're getting the Mad King, Jamie killing the Mad King, this shadow that we've been like obsessing with. Obviously, I was still like, it's the mountain. It's not the mountain. Just get over it. <laughs> it's Jamie um, killing it's Jamie, the Mad it's definitely, King. I mean, those were the two theories. Like, it was like, is it either it's the mountain or it's the Mad King with the sleeve, you know? So it, it is the Mad King. Um, in case you missed it, it's like super quick. You get like a, a glimpse of like the shadow of. Him stabbing the Mad King in the back. And sitting on the throne. And sitting on the throne. Holy shit. It's like, oh, you're giving us a flashback, but like really quickly. Really? Are you not? Okay, that's all we're going to get. All right. I mean, maybe we'll get more, but right now it's like Bran is getting the whole story, the, the history of Westeros all in his head. Oh my God. Um, it was just like the biggest download in the history yeah. of downloads. And I'm pretty badass. I, and, and I'm just like, really scared for him. I don't know if he can handle this. This is going to be like a big deal. But it was he, it was all meant to be. It was all meant to be. But he's I don't even think he's able to sort of like process all this information. He has all the data, but he don't I don't think he has the processing power to deal with it. I feel like because he is now the three-eyed raven that comes also with a lot of abilities or, or new things on him, right? I don't think that, you know, he would have been made the Three-Eyed Raven. Even though the Three-Eyed Raven, the, original, the other one, said, no, you're not ready. I feel like, well, maybe that's just how it was meant. Maybe that's what will get him ready. 
that he's just kind of pushed into that position and that's what you know is, is the first step to get him there but guess who got there in the nick of time and took on a lot of whites in one go come with me if you <laughs> i know right the, uh, i love this scene so benjamin stark yes the long lost uncle that we've all been wondering what happened to benjamin stark where is he um and actually i think kenny and i discussed this quite in depth in our last live discussion on last week's episode and we're like well maybe it's benjamin maybe it's cold hands that's coming well, turns out Benjen is cold hands. And, you know, th there's been a lot of theories, I think, around um, who cold hands is. And cold hands, from what I understand, is the character in the book that we hadn't seen. Obviously, we hadn't seen in the show. So people were wondering, are we going to see him? And then there's also a lot of theories around who he is because he's this mysterious figure that we don't know who he is. Um, and then some theories were that it was Benjen. Now, it's not explicitly said in the show that he is Cold Hand that Benjen is Cold Hands, but uh, if you watch the Inside the Episode uh, feature, the creators do call Benjen Cold Hands, which I'm like, so he is Cold Hands. So I think that's kind of like a confirmation. Official, yeah, official confirmation from the creators that Benjen is Cold Hands, and and I cold guess Cold Hands Benjen. Cold Hands, yeah. It's interesting how he tells the story of how he was basically saved. He was stabbed by a White Walker, and as he was basically transforming, the children found him and plunged a dragon glass into his heart, therefore stopping the transformation. Yeah. Which is interesting because clearly dragon glass can be used to transform a normal person into a White Walker or prevent the transformation from occurring. Yeah. Very interesting. And that's why he has cold hands. <laughs> but it's good now that Mira and Bran now have someone who can protect them and who can basically take them in this journey and someone who actually understands sort of what's going on with this, right? He had that relationship with the Three-Eyed Raven. He sort of knows what Bran has to go through. He said that at some point, the Night's nice King will get, will find the men, will get to the wall or through the wall and that Bran will be ready to face him. Yeah. Meaning showdown between the Night's King and Bran. Or at least Bran is, is, is meant to play a really big role in stopping the White Walkers. So, you yeah. know. It's gonna very, and then yeah, it looks like he's going to have Uncle Benjamin's help. Yeah. A lot quieter of an episode than last week's episode, but you know, I'll, I'll take I'll take a little quiet before the storm because I don't know if I'm ready for that, but yeah. But that's what we thought of this episode. What did you think of this episode? What were the moments that really stood out to you? What are you hoping for in the upcoming episodes? Comment below, let us know. And if you want to talk some more about this episode, don't forget that we have live discussions every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time with Kenny. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Change. See, that's the problem. With, the that's the are. problem with the, with Game of Thrones. You know, they make you like characters so much. You're like, oh, I like you. And then they and take you die, and you die, and you die. <laughs> I'm Hold sorry. Over. Oh, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Flashback, flashback. We had a horror flashback. Take it back. I take it back.